When we think about treatment of myeloma, we first think about whether the patient is a transplant candidate or not. Uh, if the person is a transplant candidate by virtue of age and has adequate liver, heart, lung, and kidney function, we think nowadays of using combinations of novel agents as the initial treatment, bortezomib, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone, either as a two or three drug combination is very commonly used nowadays. And in fact, the three drugs used together uh, achieves a response in all new patients uh, with myeloma, and three quarters of them getting a very good partial, and half of them getting a complete response. After this induction therapy in the transplant candidates, patients then proceed to get high-dose melphalan, an autologous stem cell transplant. And now what's being uh, uh, explored in myeloma is the use of these same novel agents uh, to consolidate the response to transplant and also to maintain it. So for example, lenalidomide has been used to consolidate or increase the depth of response or extent of response to a transplant and also to maintain the time without active myeloma that you achieve after a transplant. So in a transplant candidate, novel therapies now need to be used initially as part of the transplant itself and then potentially to maintain the response. There are even trials now of novel therapy combinations with or without transplant to determine, since the new drugs in, together are working so well, where does the transplant itself fit now into the treatment paradigm. Now the non-transplant candidate with newly diagnosed myeloma is usually older or doesn't have kidney, liver, lung, or heart function that would allow a transplant. And those patients similarly should receive novel therapies. Again, uh, lenalidomide, uh, bortezomib are often combined with melphalan and prednisone therapy and in this context have markedly increased the extent and the frequency of response. And just as in the younger patients, uh, so it's true here in the older folks, um, maintenance is now being used with either lenalidomide or bortezomib. In particular, lenalidomide has shown great promise, again, in prolonging the time without active multiple myeloma. So nowadays, when someone has new myeloma, uh, novel therapies need to be included in the initial treatment for all patients. Um, we also have similar progress in relapsed multiple myeloma. Uh, there, we have approved agents such as the lenalidomide, dexamethasone, bortezomib, and bortezomib doxyl therapy. All of them can achieve responses in patients with relapsed multiple myeloma and therefore are FDA approved for purpose of treatment in this setting. Excitingly though, we have very great progress uh, occurring, promising next generation proteasome inhibitors such as carfilzomib, promising next generation lenalidomide or immunomodulatory like drugs, pomalidomide, already have achieved remarkable success even when the currently available drugs are no longer effective. Combination therapies of proteasome inhibitors such as bortezomib, examples include bortezomib and the AKT inhibitor parafosine, or bortezomib and the histone deacetylase inhibitors, either panabinostat or varinostat, are achieving remarkable responses even when bortezomib is no longer effective. And similarly, lenalidomide dexamethasone has been combined, in this case, with an antibody called elituzumab, showing great promise again to achieve high responses even in advanced myeloma. So the real take-home message for patients and caregivers alike is that with the advent of novel therapies, it's a new world in myeloma. Uh, there is the promise and hope for uh, achieving in a majority of patients a chronic disease state in myeloma. And I do think with combinations of novel agents soon to be developed, adding maybe a fourth or fifth agent to the backbone of three drugs, that cure honestly is on the horizon.